Welcome to the Reach for Reading Grades 3 through 6 Orchestrating Small Group Instruction Module. My name is Denise Detmar and I'm the Associate National Training Manager for National Geographic Learning. I'm excited to assist you in this training session today. While the big question can whet the student's appetite for reading, good literature truly seals the deal. Reach for Reading includes Caldecott and Newbery winners, as well as National Geographic exclusive articles and interviews with scientists and explorers. The rich multicultural selections and the assortment of genres entice the students. And when they have something in front of them that they want to read, they're motivated to learn how to read well. Reach for Reading's leveled libraries will help ensure that students have access to high interest fiction and nonfiction texts at their appropriate reading levels. Let's talk about our goals for this session. Today, we really want to understand the research behind small group reading, learn what to consider when we're creating our small groups, identify the small group lesson plans that are found in Reach for Reading for your grade level, investigate the student learning stations in Reach for Reading, and view the online resources. We have a lot to discuss, so let's get started. I'd like to share a quote from Fontas and Pinnell that gives us a rationale for why to use small groups in the classroom. Teachers cannot expect students to expand their reading abilities on their own, even if they're given time to read. Explicit instruction is essential for most students and will make reading more powerful for all students. So what is small group reading? Small group instruction is when a teacher is working with a small group of students on a specific learning objective. These small groups usually consist of two to six students to provide students with a reduced student-teacher ratio. And small group reading will typically follow whole group instruction in the classroom. So why use small group reading in the classroom? When we use small group reading, we can reach students with varying interests, strengths, and personalities. Research has shown that using small group reading in the classroom is more effective than only using whole group reading or whole group instruction. Small group instruction allows for flexibility and individual growth. It provides opportunities for students to work closely with peers and work closely with texts, and it enhances development as critical readers, writers, talkers, and thinkers as students share what they learn about the big question from their book that is just at their own level. I call this a just right book. And small group reading is an important component of balanced literacy. So what is guided reading? Guided reading is an instructional approach that involves a teacher working with a small group of students. Students will demonstrate similar reading behaviors and can all read similar texts with teacher support and scaffolds. Again, these groups are flexible and temporary as students' needs change. So teachers would use guided reading in a small group instruction setting. Why would we use guided reading in small group instruction? Students will develop as individual readers while teachers are available and right on the spot for support and scaffolding. Students will learn skills and strategies that will allow them to read difficult texts independently. We typically will do this using close reading in Reach for Reading. We use guided reading so students experience success in reading for meaning, and also students receive more individualized teaching time. In guided reading, 
teachers can use good literature to strengthen reading comprehension strategies. So let's look at the Reach for Reading instruction. Implementation of Reach for Reading follows a best practice approach to instruction. Although there are many grouping formats that teachers may use for reading instruction in their classroom, we focus on two primary types, heterogeneous groups and homogeneous groups. Whole group instruction is typically working with heterogeneous group of students, and our small group instruction is working with homogeneous groups of students. In whole group instruction, teachers will use direct instruction with all the students in the classroom at varying levels, but they're working in the same text, which is typically our anthology. In small group instruction, teachers will use direct instruction and scaffolding of targeted skills with a small group of students who have similar needs. This is where you'll be using the leveled library books. These two types of instruction are meant to be teacher-led. While the teacher is working with a small group, there's other groups of students or partners who are working independently from that teacher and that small group. Too often in small group reading sessions and in guided reading sessions, the comprehension focus points are random and they're guided by the content of the text rather than teachers choosing the text based on the comprehension focus. Guided reading can be accomplished with Reach for Reading small group lessons because we focus on the same comprehension skill or strategy in both groups. Let me give you an example. In whole group instruction, we teach and model that skill or strategy, and then we meet with small groups of students that have the same similar needs, and we continue working on that same skill or strategy and allow students to apply what they have learned in their leveled books. Reach for Reading focuses on a gradual release of responsibility model. The role of the teacher and the student changes with time. This is risk-free learning, in my opinion. Educators teach and model first, and then allow students to practice that skill or strategy in a group with teacher support and scaffolds before releasing students to try it on their own. This is often referred to as I do, we do, you do. You'll notice the role of the teacher decreases as we move through the graph, and the role of the students increases as we move through this gradual release of responsibility. Best practices based on research are found online in the professional development link. Author monographs are also found online and include Orchestrating Instruction by Leda Kratke and Jennifer Turner, a must read before beginning small groups in your classroom. They quote, participating in small instructional groups, as well as assessing literacy events within the whole community and giving opportunities to read independently enhance children's development as critical readers, writers, talkers, and thinkers. I encourage you to read this before you begin your small groups. Reach for Reading incorporates best practices into the program using literacy routines. Specific routines for grades three through six are found in the professional development link on the mynggconnect.com website and also in the unit one and two teachers editions. I have pointed out a few routines that connect to small group reading in grades three through six on the slide. Today we are going to use grade five as our example. However, the instructional path for all of the grade levels will be the same and only the content will be obviously different for each grade level. 
Some of the routines that teachers will use for small group reading include a small group reading routine, a close reading routine, a markup text routine, learning station routines, and an independent reading routine. There are other routines that will be used as well. Also found in the professional development link online are brief recorded video sessions. I suggest viewing the sessions on close reading with Reach for Reading, Reach for Reading and small group instruction, and using Reach for Reading in a balanced literacy classroom. These are excellent video sessions written by the experts and will help as you begin to develop small group reading in your classroom. The instruction in Reach for Reading is set up in a workshop-based model, beginning with whole group instruction, before moving on to small group reading time or small group instruction, and learning station time. You'll notice, and I'll mention as we go through the slides, that small group reading time is happening simultaneously with learning station time. There are many ways to group your students for small group or leveled reading instruction. Typically, for our purposes, we would group our students based on ability, but there are other ways that you can group students as well. Sometimes grouping your students according to interest, student choice such as friendships, teacher choice based on a specific skill, gender, similar or mixed talents, a need-specific skill, including phonics or reteaching, is a good way to mix things up in the classroom. Let's talk about ways to create small groups in the classroom. Oral reading assessments, placement tests, and student observations are terrific tools to help create small groups in the classroom. Keep in mind these groups will be flexible and may change throughout the year as students progress and also need reteaching. Reach for Reading oral reading assessments are used as a type of running record. These help teachers in the grouping of students, the acceleration of a student, and of course observing particular difficulties in some of your students. Included with this oral reading assessment is questions to ask students as a wrap up to the selected text that they read and also a rubric to determine oral fluency, accuracy, and rate. The oral reading assessment is found online in the teacher resources and also in the assessment handbook. The reading placement test in grades three through six assesses reading levels to place students in the appropriate level books during small group reading time. This placement test determines a student's lexile level. It also includes a phonics portion that can be used to determine which students need support in phonics. This placement test is available in print or online under the Teacher Resources tab. As we look at the Table of Contents page, you will notice that each unit follows the same instructional path. Teachers will always begin with a unit launch and introduction of the theme before moving on to the instruction which is broken down into four weeks. And each unit ends with a unit wrap up. Down the left hand side of this page, you'll see the genre of reading and the lexile levels. You'll also see the close readings highlighted in blue, and at the bottom, the small group leveled libraries with Lexile levels are listed here. These are the specific texts that we'll be talking about in small group reading. 
Keep in mind each title is connected to the unit science or social studies theme and also the unit's big question. As we have talked about, Reach for Reading is based on the rotational model. A model day would start with whole group instruction, and then while the teacher is meeting with small groups for small group reading, guided reading, or differentiation, the students are engaged at learning centers. You will then bring the students back for whole group time as a beneficial way to end this reading block session. Remember, small group reading and learning stations are happening simultaneously. The resources pages in the front of each unit show teachers how the day is divided into whole group, small group reading time, learning stations, and assessment and planning. These pages will help you with the resources that you'll need for each one of these stations. Now let's look at the skills at a glance page. Reach for Reading shows all the skills broken down by week. Tested skills are noted by a red or purple checked icon. These are the most important skills to emphasize. The Skills at a Glance page also shows the text used for small group reading time and the activities for learning station time. As we look at the weekly planner, we'll notice that each day is divided into the workshop layout that we mentioned earlier with whole group time, small group time, and learning stations. Common Core Standards are also listed for each lesson. Tested skills are identified, and suggested times are listed for each lesson. But remember that the online lesson planner can be used to customize instructional time. The small group reading time lessons are listed for each day of the week, and also the learning station activities that go along with this. Now let's take a look at the small group reading for the unit. You may wish to go to the small group reading tab in your unit one and two teachers edition to follow along. You will notice that there are four leveled books for each week of instruction and one explorer book. The four leveled books are leveled this way. One text is two years below grade level, another one year below grade level, Another text is on grade level, and another text is one year above grade level. These texts are designated for days two through five of the week. Also included is a leveled explorer book for each week of instruction. This is displayed with the NG golden rectangle and designated for day one of the week. The Pioneer Edition, displayed with a green triangle on the cover of the Explorer book, is the below-level text, and the Pathfinder Edition, noted with a red triangle on the cover of the book, is an on-level text. All of the photographs in both editions are the same. You may wish to grab a Pioneer and a Pathfinder Edition and compare by having them side to side. You will notice that just the text is easier to read in the Pioneer edition, and students absolutely love these Explorer books. The next two pages provide specific details for the reading routines you'll be using during small group reading time. This time frame should be flexible and fluid and also meet the students' needs in your classroom. On these pages, you'll see the program resources shown on the top left for both print and technology. Practice masters, including graphic organizers, story words, and organizers used to reinforce the comprehension strategy, connect across texts, and practice skills are displayed. 
small group reading assessment resources, including a speaking and listening observation log, a reading strategy assessment, and reader reflections are also found here. All of these resources are found in the assessment handbook and also online. The small group reading lessons follow the same format each week. This format includes teachers selecting and introducing the text, students reading and integrating ideas, and finally connecting across multiple texts. Teachers also have an opportunity to conduct conferences with students each week. Let's look into each one of these reading routines next. Let's talk about selecting the text for your students. In the teaching resources for each week, there is a lesson plan for each text. A summary of each of these books is included. Use these summaries of the books in the teaching resources to view an overview of the content. Assign books according to students' interests and their reading levels. Let's talk about selecting the text. When a teacher chooses a simpler or easier text for students, it allows them to focus on the meaning and enjoy the humor and suspense of that text. An instructional text allows readers to learn more and progress while you provide practice of the known reading strategies. An instructional text also allows for students to solve problems. A difficult text may be discouraging to that reader, but may also encourage students with a challenge. When my daughter Carly was in fourth grade, Reach for Reading, her teacher would choose an instructional text for most of the time. An easier text when she wanted Carly to lead the discussion in the small group, and a more difficult text once in a while when she wanted Carly to really focus on listening in small group instruction. This was a great way to give her an opportunity to read a variety of texts and still be learning along the way. After choosing the book for your students to read, Teachers will activate prior knowledge and build background for each book using these teaching resources. Remind students that all of the books connect to the big question. Introduce vocabulary by using vocabulary routine one to teach the story words for each book. To find the vocabulary routines, access them online under the professional development link or in your Unit 1 and 2 Teacher's Editions in the very beginning of the text. Reading and Integrating Ideas is next. Have students read independently and circulate to observe students as they read. You may ask individuals to read sections aloud and note any miscues as they read. Teachers should also encourage students to self-correct and model by asking questions like, did that make sense in the sentence? You said this, does that sound right? Monitor students' understanding of the text by having them complete the Graphic Organizer Practice Master page for their book. Prompt them to show you where in the books they gathered the information to complete their organizer. Next, form homogeneous discussion groups by grouping students who have read the same book together. Distribute the discussion guide practice master for that book to each group member. Monitor group discussions by having students discuss the book they read using the questions on the discussion guide. You may also use the building comprehension questions in the teaching resources to develop higher order thinking skills. Discussion guide answer keys are found on the small group lesson pages at the very end. Next, provide a writing option. Have each student complete one of the writing options from the teaching resources and encourage students to share their writing with the group.
Connecting across text is next. Form heterogeneous groups by grouping students who have read different books together. Include at least one representative for each book read that week. Distribute the Connect Across Text Practice Master for the week. Explain to each group that they will share the books they read, talk about their theme, and discuss the books in general. Ask students to summarize the books they just read with each other using new story words that help them understand the theme and the content. You may also wish to have them refer to their graphic organizers as they share their books with the group. Also have groups use the questions provided on the Connect Across Text Practice Masters to guide the discussion. See the discussion guide answer keys for possible responses. Teachers may also use the Speaking and Listening Observation Log Assessment Master to assess students' participation in these discussions with one another. Conducting student conferences is next. You may wish to conduct conferences once a week, once a unit, or once every quarter. Conducting conferences works like this. Assess reading by having each student select and read aloud from a section of the book that connects to the big question. Listen for fluency and ask questions like, which strategies did you use to help you understand this section? Use the reading strategy rubrics on the assessment masters to assess how well the student uses the reading strategies. Then have the student complete the Reader Reflection Assessment Master to share how the student felt about that particular text. Assessing writing is next. Have the student share a completed writing option. Ask the student to tell you about what he or she wrote. Monitor responses to gauge how well the writing relates to the book. You may wish to ask, how did your writing help you understand this book? Then plan intervention or acceleration. Ask the student to summarize what he or she has learned and plan for further instruction. If the student needs additional support with reading strategies, use the assessment and reteaching resources that are provided. And if the student successfully applies the focus skills, use the recommended books on the pages following to guide the students in choosing books for independent reading. Let's look at that now. Here are the recommended books to guide students to read independently. Once students have read the small group leaders, here is a list of additional recommended books, both fiction and nonfiction, that connect directly to the content of the unit. This list also includes award-winning books as well as Common Core exemplars. There is also a suggested author study featuring an author of one of the selections the students have read in the anthology. This is a great enrichment option for advanced students and also a great option for students that need to read more. Day one small group reading starts with our National Geographic Explorer books. These books contain the same content written at two levels. The Pioneer edition is written below grade level, where the Pathfinder edition is written on grade level. The pages that follow provide teaching resources for each one of the leveled readers. For each reader, you have an overview of the book, including title, author, page count, genre, and content connection. You will also have a lexile level and at times the guided reading level included. You will also see that there are program resources for each text included a suggested pacing for the week. A summary of the book is included, 
activating prior knowledge ideas, and building background questions and activities. You'll also have the story words for each text, and on the page following in your teacher's edition, building comprehension questions and writing options. You'll also notice where the yellow star is that you have objectives. The objectives for each of the four texts will be the same as we're covering the same skills and strategies that we talked about in whole group instruction in our small group instruction. On the second page of the lesson plans or teaching resources, where you'll find the building comprehension questions and the writing options, you will also see the practice masters that are used for small group instruction. Notice that there are red check marks showing the tested skills that need to be covered in each one of those texts through these practice masters. This is very helpful when you're making sure that students are going to be successful on the small group reading assessments at the end of the unit. Now that you know what you will be doing during small group instruction, let's take a look at what the rest of the class will be doing. There are many options for what the other students are doing, but we definitely want to focus on the four strands of literacy, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Some of the options for what students can be doing include independent reading, writing in response journals or working on a writing project, working on the online vocabulary games found on mynggconnect.com website, conducting research, working on related word work or reading routines, or participating in literacy centers. You may create listening, grammar, or vocabulary practice centers. And you may also have additional ideas as well. Learning stations are provided, including multiple options for each literacy strand, speaking and listening, language and vocabulary, writing, cross-curricular, reading, and also intervention. You'll find these learning station activities in your Teamwork Activities cross-curricular book or your Language and Literacy Teamwork Activity book. Learning stations are great for rotations while the teacher is meeting with small groups for differentiation, guided reading, reteaching, or literature circles. Daily language arts lessons are provided for spelling and word work. These may also be used for individual or small group learning station activities. The words provided are related to the content of the selections students will be exposed to during the week. Daily grammar is also provided as part of the daily language arts lessons. The grammar skills will build upon each other as students progress through the units. Let's look at some options for a rotational model with varying numbers of groups. Here you see three groups. One group of students working on audio recordings with a writing task, another group of students independently reading, and the third group is working with the teacher. In another rotational model with three groups, one group is working with the teacher, while another group of students is working independently, and a third group of students is working on literacy centers across the classroom. Here is another example of a rotational model with small groups and ideas for each of four rotations. In the reading rotation, students are independently reading, working on comprehension coach or vocabulary or phonics games, or working on reading routines. In the writing group, students are working on a writing project, daily writing, 
or writing routines. In the speaking and listening group, students are listening to Comprehension Coach or working on the online resources on mynggconnect.com. And in the grammar and spelling group, students are engaged in word work, practice masters, daily spelling, or daily grammar. You'll notice that there's not a teacher-led group in this rotation. This is great on a day when a teacher just wants to facilitate each group in the classroom and watch what each student and small group of students is doing. It's a great way to observe students. Here's another example of four groups. One group is meeting with a teacher, while another group is working in computers or a listening center, a third group is working at, with seat work, and the fourth group is working in literacy stations. The next slide shows a rotational model with five groups. One teacher-led group, one group working in grammar, another group doing reading, another group working on speaking and listening, and finally, another group writing. There are many different rotational models that you can use, and Google.com has excellent resources for you to find additional ones that you may be interested in. The resources we discussed today can be found on www.mynggconnect.com, the companion website for Reach for Reading. I recommend the professional development link for the author monographs, reading routines, and recorded modules from our literacy experts. The resources, including the practice masters, graphic organizers, assessment masters, and metacognitive measures are found in the resource directory in the Reach into Teaching box. One idea I found for organizing your leveled books is shown here. Search Google.com and narrow the search to images for more ideas. Whether you have years of experience or have just started your education journey, this is the beginning of an exciting start to small groups and increased student success in the classroom. So think about it. What are you most excited about when it comes to orchestrating small groups in your Reach for Reading classroom? The goals for our session today were to understand the research behind small group reading, learn what to consider when creating reading groups, look for and identify the small group lesson plans included in Reach for Reading, investigate the student learning stations in Reach for Reading, and view the online resources. We had a lot to accomplish today, and I think we did it all. Thank you so much for joining me for the Reach for Reading Orchestrating Small Group Instruction On-Demand Training Module for Grades 3 through 6. I hope this module has been beneficial and helpful and I also hope that you will access other on-demand training modules to benefit your Reach for Reading classroom.